Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Coffee with Craig show. We'll be talking about commercial real estate in Central and Eastern Europe. So good Tuesday morning, and welcome to the Coffee with Craig show. We're here back in our Warsaw studio uh, with uh, Winston Norman, our editor-in-chief. Winston, how are you doing today? All right, Craig, how are you doing? Good, good. Did you survive the rain this morning? Yeah, yeah, I was just yeah. looking out my window, drinking my coffee. Oh, okay. I'm glad I don't have to go anywhere too early today. <laughs> too early, I have no sense of that. <laughs> I'll wait till the rain stops. Exactly. So tell us what the headlines are for the day. Yeah, so uh, today we'll start in Poland and uh, Rolig Sus Logistics is developing uh, its road transport with Scandinavian countries. Uh, Czech Republic is among the key nearshoring destinations. Accolade has, has bought a multifunctional complex near Prague Airport and interest in mixed-use complexes is growing throughout the region. All right, so quite a lot of interesting things there for today. Um, so thank you for all joining uh, the Coffee with Craig show this Tuesday morning. We've got a lot of things that we're putting together for the after uh, after summer, but starting to work on them now. Uh, we've got two events in September. One is September 19th, the CEE Marketplace, Retail Marketplace and Awards in Prague. And also straight after that, we have the CEO Awards in the Serbia Monthly CEO Awards in Belgrade at the uh, Crown Plaza Hotel. So busy, busy summer, busy, uh, busy uh, September already. Two events that are not to be missed. And then, of course, October. Uh, October really is the uh, month, the uh, investment month. And we have on the... Um, we have, first of all, our CRE Awards on the 19th of October um, in Budapest. And then on the 25th of October, also the Investment Awards. So a lot happening. And, of course, Expo Real at the beginning of the month and uh, uh, our magazine for that as well. So anyway, we hope you're having a good summer. And uh, let's uh, take a little break and we'll shoot right over uh, back to Winston Norman and the news. So welcome back, and uh, Winston, yeah, the headlines sounded great. Let us know about the actual news today. Right, thanks, Craig. So, um, yeah, so Rolingsus, uh, which is Poland's largest logistics operator, is now offering a daily connection to Scandinavia, uh, with Sweden and Norway included. And these deliveries are carried out by the company's new branch in Szczecin, which is in Poland, and uh, Sus cooperates with the industry's largest local operator in the region, which is Post Nord. And according to uh, Piot, uh, Shal Kivitz, he's the director of International General Cargo at Rolig. We are aware of the growth opportunities provided by cooperation with countries such as Sweden and Norway, which is why we decided to ally with the largest operator in the region. And uh, just adding Marcin Krzyzlak, which is regional director at Rolig. Mm -hmm. uh, the West Pomeranian region is a natural logistics hub in the context of trade with Scandinavian countries. Among other reasons, we decided to make new investments in this region. So it's a uh, yeah, it's uh, something interesting to follow up with the Baltic Awards. There. Yeah, well, I mean, we yeah, they were always expanding there, and now they're doing more, just like everybody, it seems, from, uh, you know, running operations from Poland uh, into Scandinavia, into uh, into the Baltic region, and vice versa. So, yeah, clearly it's building if they need more logistics. Looks like it. Mm -hmm. And uh, moving to the Czech Republic, and according to Near Shoring, the latest report by Cushman and Wakefield, the Central East European region is uh, an ideal destination. It's relatively cheap with labor. Uh, it's, it's a very good general location, and uh, it's got good transport infrastructure. Uh, this will allow manufacturers to save costs, including those for transport, reduce delivery times, and increase flexibility in ordering. And in doing so, they will avoid the risks associated with supply chain disruptions that we have seen recently, rising shipping costs and negative perceptions related to ESG. And uh, the main target within CE will be countries with the advantage of being in the EU and are close to Western markets, and uh, especially Germany and Austria. Uh, the Czech Republic is the only country bordering both and fulfilling the other conditions, uh, making it a hot candidate for local uh, locating production 
capacities. And according to G.D. Krzyzczyk, partner at Cushman and Wakefield, he says, we are already aware of more manufacturers considering the Czech Republic or the Central European region as one of their preferred destinations. So we'll definitely see more of these activities that will boost the local economy and employment moving forwards. Yeah, so Czech, the Czech is a yeah, very desirable location. Some good news, yeah. It's, uh, it just seems like the when I hear from developers, the big problem is uh, permitting. Massive problem. Yeah, Czech yeah. Permitting, yeah. Hopefully that'll improve. I think so, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, staying in the Czech Republic, and uh, Accolade Group has expanded its portfolio with the acquisition of the Karlo Vaska Business Park uh, near the Prague Airport. Uh, the group has acquired a majority stake from the Czech real estate fund uh, Consec, and the complex includes four buildings with a total area of around 20,000 square meters, which are used for e-commerce, logistics, offices, and retail. And the transaction was broken by CBRE. And according to uh, Lukas Ripel, he's the chief operating officer at Accolade in the Czech Republic, the acquisition of the park fits perfectly into our investment strategy, which diversification of the portfolio in terms of tenants and regions is key for us. Uh, current tenants of the site include bus and coach manufacturer Evobus, healthcare company uh, Fresnius, and uh, air conditioning manufacturer Lindab. Mm. And finally for today, um, and staying in the Czech Republic actually, Mm -hmm. uh, and there is growing interest in mixed-use complexes in the Czech Republic. However, the construction of such spaces in the Czech Republic still lags behind that of its neighbouring countries. And the the main reason, which you rightly said earlier, is Mm -hmm. is permitting problems. Uh, In Poland, for example, it takes... Apparently, it takes a few months to get a permit, whereas in the Czech Republic, it can take years. I was going to say about a decade, I think, from what I understand from investors. And, uh, you know, they kind of wait for everyone to go out of business before they issue the permit, it seems. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a slower slower process there for sure. And according mm. to uh, Joseph Stanko at Colliers, he says, so-called mixed-use projects are still rare in our country. These are absolutely unique, progressive projects that can combine offices, shops, housing, or spaces for various forms of social activities. Although we are currently seeing larger developments in the market, functions often remain separate or the projects are too fragmented. And uh, he goes on to explain, for office tenants, it is attractive to offer their employees all the amenities they need to close the workplace, while for shops and food services, it's an advantage also for uh, concentrating uh, potential customers. And uh, when Click here to subscribe to the Coffee with Craig show and don't forget to share it with your friends.